what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel and i don't even know where to, th this is going to be a ram video this is going to be a ram video i don't know where to start this but i i have to get it out in some sort of way because if i hold it in it's only going to get worse as you can see i am a chicago sports fan i'm a bulls fan i'm a white Sox fan um unfortunately a chicago bears fan uh yeah after that game today before we go into this intro i, I have to say this nine sacks we gave up nine nine the number nine nine sacks miles garrett pole bowler great player he had four alone by himself Seriously? That, that's what we're doing? That's what we're doing? Man, get my fucking intro. Alright, so... My favorite team, I was born into this thing. Uh, we lost 26 to six. If I'm looking at this correctly. Yeah, 26 to six. I ended up getting blackout drunk probably around halftime because I knew what it was. I knew what I was watching. I, I'm gonna just get the positives out the way. The defense, defense played well. The defense kept a good Cleveland team Cleveland offense, you know, Nick Chubb and Kareem in check for three quarters. For three quarters. I believe the Browns only had, what, 13? Only had 13 points through three quarters? So the defense played well. The defense played, I'm going to keep reiterating this. The defense played well until they were gassed. And you want to know why they were gassed? Because our offensive genius, aka the ball-headed Man, I almost just said something that would have gotten kicked off YouTube. <laughs> AKA Matt Nagy, who's supposedly an offensive genius, only has our offense scoring more than, has our offense scoring less than 20 points a game in 2021. Like, that, this offense could work if it was, you know, mid 2000, because that's how we got to the Super Bowl. Our offense wasn't shit then. In fact, the Bears office never has been shit. And the one time it was, we had a literally an all-time historic, historically terrible defense. So I don't even It's like I, I don't even know what to say about that offensive game plan I just watched. Like, okay, it's one thing to know that Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney are game records. That's one thing. That, that's expected. You look at the Browns defense, you know you are circling those two, especially Miles Garrett. It's another thing to know that and to have a game plan and don't do nothing to help your tackles or your starting uh or your starting rookie quarterback. You don't do a single rollout, a single boot. Um when it was obvious, like 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 when the defense didn't expect it to happen. Um there were like no delays like it, it was bad it was like the receivers and tight ends weren't getting separation so justin had nowhere to go um like he didn't have more than two seconds because miles garrett or Jadavion Clowney was in his face the entire game we have older tackles and they're not getting no help at what point do you not you know adjust like at halftime should have should have been the adjustment. Matt Nagy did not adjust to what the Browns defense was doing. How do you how do you not adjust? At that point they had already had like five sacks. You don't adjust at all. You don't help your tackle chip Miles Garrett chip today the Javian Clowney. Like you do not like and, and and this is the most frustrating part. They didn't run a halfback slip screen until the fourth quarter. Until the game was already over. 
You don't run a halfback slip screen all game until the end of the game when your offensive line has already given up eight sacks? The Browns was running halfback screens the entire game, and you know why they worked? They worked because our defensive line was also getting after the quarterback. They worked because our D-line was aggressive, and they was getting got. So, Matt, Nag Matt Nagy didn't adjust at all. He did not adjust, and that's the most frustrating part. Because this is four years now. Uh, we can beat the terrible to... We can beat the average to terrible team. We can beat them. But when it's time for that competition to go up and we start playing the playoff teams, like the Rams, the Browns, Matt Nagy dumbass never adjusts. He never adjusts to what the to what they're doing on the field. He keeps thinking that his plays are going to work, and they're just not. Nothing worked today. He didn't even try to adjust to maybe something that would work. Like... And, and I feel absolutely terrible because, yes, I am wearing a Justin Fields jersey and people was blaming Fields for this. I'm like, no, his offensive line gave up nine sacks. Nine. Nine. What quarterback in their right mind is playing well after getting sacked four times in one game? But nine? No quarterback, not even Tom Brady himself is playing that well when he gets sacked more than four times. And, you know, they, they were trying to run quick game, but because the pass rush was getting there so fast, you know, Fields was trying to force some throws that weren't there. Uh, but you know why they could have worked? If the receivers had got any separation. The Titans had got any separation. Them boys was getting no separation. And if they were, the offensive line was not holding up. So, but, but really, I, I don't even know what, like, like the defense played well. The defense played well. I expected more of our offense. I expected the players around Fields to play better since it is his first start. Everybody played bad. Everybody. And you know why I'm not this hard on Fields? Because he's a rookie. I know he's going to make mistakes. But our offensive line having a false start on third and one when we're trying to get in rhythm and then giving up a sack right after that? Like, what, what are we doing here? Our receivers not even trying to, you know, fight for the ball or come back to the ball when they are open to help their quarterback out. No scramble drill. No, like it, like this whole game was bad. Like was just god awful. And I don't even know because if the Browns line was doing this. I have some serious questions about how we're going to protect Fields against the Lions. Because I swear to God, if we lose to fucking Detroit, if we lose to Detroit, I might just throw my TV out the window. I might just throw my TV out the window. Now, the only thing that would make this week hilarious for me, because the Lions already lost on a, uh, on a 66-yard field goal, which is hilarious. If the Vikings and Packers lose, that is the only solace I will have for this week. And I don't think Green Bay is going to lose. But I don't know, man. So, something has got to change. I, Matt Nagy's got to get fired. This is now four years of this. Four years. We had all kinds of different quarterbacks come in, and the offense is not working. And the play calling is not there. The offense isn't working. Bad offensive line or not, you can play call around a bad offensive line if they're not having a good day. Boy, you can't do is have two defensive ends just tee off on your quarterback and you just drop back and pass after pass after pass with no uh, rollout or no boot. Nothing to catch those ends off guard to keep them from rushing the quarterback uh, very aggressively. Just god-awful play calling and a god-awful game plan on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, after halftime, I was, like, I was still thinking, I'm like, you know, we, we're still in this. We're not down by that much. You know, they go on a halftime, they adjust. You know, we're right back in this thing. That didn't happen. There was no adjustments. There was nothing to, there was no adjustments on Matt Nagy's part. And I firmly believe we should leave him in Cleveland. He should be fired because I've had enough of this. It's been enough of this. Four years of him as the coach. And outside of that first year when nobody knew what we were doing, and NFL defensive coordinators couldn't game plan to stop it. Matt Nagy hasn't adjusted his playbook or his play calling. He either needs to do one of the two things. He needs to give up play calling 
No, he must give up play calling or actually learn how to adjust to what the defenses are doing if he's going to continue play calling. Because what I just saw today was fucking inexcusable. Some bullshit. Make sure you leave a like on the video. I don't know if I'm going to make one for next week. But, but what I just saw was downright awful and I had to get this off my chest.